what's going on guys it's, it's you just came in here back with another video so i hope you guys uh enjoy your weekend and stuff like that we guys enjoy your day off and stuff like that so our reaction video is coming up so don't so stay tuned don't go away and make sure if you're new please subscribe to this channel and put on your notification button like comment and share and plus more reactions are coming up of mr nightmare and blue spooky once they make new videos then i will put a reaction video on this channel and new xbox gameplays are coming up like fifa 2k and stuff like that and new reactions are coming up now if you guys want a shout out i have to find out a schedule when i make a shout out video and plus you guys need to give me positive feedback also and i'll make a schedule on my vlogs too but mostly gameplays and reactions but vlogs like every now and then for like mall vlogs or store vlogs or like traveling vlogs stuff like that so that way you guys can stay tuned to this channel and make sure to be updated too on this channel i'll give you video updates and stuff like that so don't go away <laughs> Okay, so don't go away with this channel. Uh, I'm obviously busy and stuff like that, but then I will, uh, you know, find a schedule one to make the videos. So I'm going to make a reaction video on Mr. Nightmare. I'm going to make a reaction video on what's it called? Hide and seek story, two more hide and seek horror stories. Yeah, I'm gonna make a reaction video on that one. Let's get to it. I used to play a lot of hide and seek with my friends when we were young. Okay. A team version of the game, though, so it was a little different. Instead of having a lone seeker who tags anybody, we would have a team of seekers and a team of hiders. And for the hiders to win, they would have to get to a certain checkpoint, and seekers would win if they tagged all the hiders. To tag one of the hiders, the seeker would have to two-hand touch their back, just like touch football. It started when we all formed our group on the block around 8 years old, all the way up until we were about 13. I lived in a cul-de-sac where there were three other houses besides mine, and kids my age lived in each one. Okay. There were also four other kids right outside the cul-de-sac around our age. So ever since I was little, I had a group of neighboring friends. That's great. When we would play hide-and-seek, we would usually play in the cul-de-sac, since there was a lot of open space, trees, bushes, and each of the houses belonged to one of us, so we could use all the property space for the game as well. Plus, the cul-de-sac was right in front of our town's nature preserve park, so it also made it more fun to have the woods as an added hiding spot. It was 2008. I was 11 years old. A time and age we would still play hide and seek on Friday nights instead of going out to flirt with girls. We had only six of us this night, so we divided our two teams into threes and split up. We were first to hide. The other team began counting down from 30, while we all went our separate ways to different houses. I ran to my next door neighbor's house and came up with a really creative idea. My friend had a green blanket outside on his patio sitting under a couple flower pots. I carefully moved the flower pots and took the green blanket, folding it over my body and crawling over to the bushes near the edge of the woods. Since our houses met the edge of the nature preserve, we could all choose if we wanted a back fence or not, and my next door neighbors chose not to have one, meaning the woods connected to some of our backyards. Mm -hmm. I heard the backyard gate open, so I quickly ran into the woods and knelt down under the green blanket. I would occasionally lift the blanket over my head to see who was there and eventually I saw one of my friends creeping around the backyard, checking under the table and such. So while they were distracted, I waddled on my knees to the backyard of the next house over, where I could hear the commotion of one of my teammates getting caught. I lifted the blanket over my head to see what was going on, and I saw someone on the other team escorting my teammate back outside to the street. This was the perfect opportunity for me to run for it. I dropped the blanket completely and just looked around one last time before getting ready to make a break for it. Then, the most unexpected happened. The sound of a shoe on freshly fallen leaves and twigs snapped from right behind my ears, and before I could even turn around, I felt two hands grab my shoulders with a very strong and tight grip. What? First of all, if you ever, if that happened to you when you're playing hide and seek, quit the game. For real. 
Someone tried to kidnap him or something. I squealed in pain for a bit and screamed stop, managing to escape the grip and run for the checkpoint. I didn't make it to the checkpoint anyway though, because I ran into one of the seekers right at the backyard gates. Nah, -uh, you gotta quit that game because if something like that happened to me, I bet you I won't. I would quit that game. I really would. If that happens to you while playing hide and seek, and if you hear a shoe from behind you where you hide, and you know your friends is that way, and your other friends is that way, and you hiding somewhere, and you hear a shoe from behind you, and now you just suddenly you feel a strong grasp of like two hands on your shoulder. Like, no. Mm mm. And besides, too, that's not smart location to play near the woods. Anybody can be near the woods. You don't know, creeper or something. We went out to the street where I found out that both of my teammates were already out, and the two other seekers were already waiting by the street. Wait, I said. If all of you guys are already out here, who was the one who found me in the woods? I asked. They all looked at each other, seemingly confused. None of them owned up to it. They all swore they hadn't even gone into the woods. As I realized they were telling the truth, I felt my heart skip a few beats before pumping back up in a rapid beat, twice as fast as normal. When I told them that somebody was in the woods and grabbed me with force, they didn't believe me at first, but I convinced them. We all went to tell our parents, and the cops were called. Unfortunately for my neighbor friend, his parents put up a fourth fence wall, separating the woods to the backyard. We continued to play hide and seek and flashlight tag past this incident up until around the age of 13. Our parents just made us carry flashlights from now on and left all the backyard lights on. And of course, the woods were off limits. It should I'm be happy anyway. to have such fond memories with friends as a young child, but that still doesn't take away from the fact that this was one of the most horrifying experiences of my life. That shouldn't even happen. No sound effects, though. This happened when I was 10 years old. I lived in a small town in New York State that didn't have much going on at all. The house next door to mine was vacant for the longest time, until one day, a moving truck pulled up in front, and a woman, a kid my age, and a toddler stepped out. Okay. Me and my dad had been sitting on the stoop talking, so we were able to go over and greet them right away. Nice the mom house. seemed pretty normal, though there was something slightly off about her personality. My dad and the mom introduced me and the other boy my age to each other. He introduced himself as CJ, and then reached out his hand for a handshake, which for kids our age at the time was very weird. I shook his hand, and I remember both of our parents left. My dad ended up pressuring me on the spot to go hang out with CJ upstairs in my room. I wasn't against it, so I led him up to my room. I sat down on my bed, and he just stared at me blankly, creepily. I asked him if he wanted to play Mario Kart, and he didn't even know what that was. I showed him a few of my video games, and he said he doesn't like video games, so I suggested we play hide and seek outside. That he agreed to. I told him he could hide first to familiarize himself with the properties, Means while I gave him a 60 second like head start. Games, he ran into his new backyard, and I started counting down from 60. When it came time to find him, I found him in literally the most obvious place he could be. He was standing behind the chimney, a spot that I had to pass to get into the backyard. From this point on, I was starting to wonder if maybe this kid wasn't all there. After 10 minutes of an anticlimactic game of hide and seek, I said I had homework to do. He asked if he could come inside with me, and I didn't know what to say. Every excuse I came up with, he would find another way of asking to come inside. Eventually, however, he did leave me alone, and I went inside. Realistically, I had nothing to do. I just didn't like the kid and didn't want to further any kind of friendship with him. That night, something terrifying happened. Of course, that night. I awoke to a thud at my bedside window. I sat up and lifted the window up. I was disturbed to see CJ's face at the upstairs window of the neighboring house. He leaned out his window and called out for me to come over and play hide and seek. I yelled over he's insane and told him to go back to sleep and leave me alone. 
I aggressively slammed my window shut, as well as the blind, and tried to go back to sleep. Weird. Two more times a rock or something was thrown at my window, but I ignored it. When it seemed to stop, I was relieved, and finally felt at ease. Ten minutes or so later, I heard a noise coming from below my window outside. It sounded like a bird was hopping around the ledge or something, possibly. Tim. The sound kept getting closer, though, and then I heard a thud come from right below my window. I didn't know what to think. What if CJ was out there? Was he trying to climb up to my window? Insane. The thought of it was so disturbing, it was almost comical. Then, I heard the slightest creak of the floorboards near my bedroom door. I turned to face the doorway, and screamed at the sight of CJ standing at my door in his pajamas. He said in a quiet Wait. voice, let's play hide and seek. My dad was in the room quicker than I could even get out of my bed. He was just as shocked and disturbed as I was. He angrily marched over to the new neighbor's house with CJ in his grip. I watched the whole thing through my window. He raised his voice quite a few times. It turned out CJ simply entered through an unlocked window downstairs. My dad got a restraining order against the woman and her son. Unfortunately, they weren't going anywhere, though. For months after this incident, I would have to awkwardly avoid eye contact with the mother next door the few times I saw her. Strangely, I never once saw CJ outside of the house again. However, every single night for over a month, I would check outside my bedroom window across to the other house and see CJ just sitting by his window, looking into mine with his creepy blank stare. It got to a point where I eventually left the blinds to that window closed 24-7, and eventually it stopped. CJ and his mom moved out less than a year later, and luckily, I never saw them again. Yeah, that's just weird stuff, man, you know? Just that's why you got to be careful because there's a lot of creeps, pedophiles, and, you know, weirdos out there. Especially a uh, scary horror hide-and-seek story. That's, like, really, you know, really just creepy and weird. So, I hope you guys like this video. If you guys want more content and more videos down below, please give me suggestions on what kind of videos to make. My, I'm going to put my email, my kick. My social media is down in the description down below. And if you guys want any shout outs, you can simply ask. And I will do it. Also, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe, like, comment, and share my videos down below. And more videos are coming up like gameplays, reactions, shout outs, or gameplays, reactions, vlogs. And shout outs every now and then. So gameplays and reactions on the daily. And shout outs and vlogs every now and then. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you guys want more videos like this, please let me know. The reactions is going to be scary reactions like Mr. Nightmare, Be Busta, Blue Spooky, um, their, react, their videos I'm going to be reacting to, and some other reaction videos like basketball, gameplays, or even like, uh, what's it called? Basketball gameplays. Sometimes vlogs or like parkour videos and stuff like that. I will also be reacting to it, or the top 10 videos, or the top 20 videos or the like the creepiest, the top 10 creepiest, stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm actually going to write down my YouTube schedule on what videos to react to. Or I can react to a popular video so that way I can get more, you know, feedback. So that way, whatever videos you guys like, I will react to. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Alright, peace out. And I hope you guys enjoy your weekend and stuff like that. And see you guys next time. Alright, bye.